that celebrates Christmas before the feast because the stores are selling uh, Christmas materials, understandably. We, who are faithful to the Catholic faith, we are preparing to celebrate the feast of the Nativity of Christ by the use of Advent. Advent is one of the Lenten seasons. And the Lenten seasons are not to be feared. They are seasons of spiritual sacrifice, exercise, in preparation for a great feast day. When you go to the gym, you expect that there will be some pain. You are going to be exercising your body in ways that you normally would not. You're going to lift weights, which are physical resistance. And what does that do for you? It makes you stronger and more powerful and healthier. And so the Lenten seasons that we use in the church provide spiritual exercises that make us stronger we feel healthier by giving up some physical things like food and comfort, by sacrificing, by doing some penance, extra prayers, and helping those around us in charity, we are strengthened by the Holy Ghost and we are preparing ourselves for the season of Christmas. What should we be doing? We look at our Blessed Mother, the Mother of our Savior, whom he loves beyond measure. And she carried within her he whom the whole universe could not contain. She was a living tabernacle of our Blessed Lord. And so during Advent, we, realizing the great gift that we receive, that through the nativity of Christ, God becoming man, he gives himself to us in such a way that he is our food. And you become what you are, what you eat. When you eat food, you are receiving energy and new cells. Your body is... So when you eat the body and blood of Christ, which we will do in just a few moments, Christ will be present, body, blood, soul, and divinity on this altar. We are permitted to eat this presence of the divine and imitate Our Lady in that we will hold within ourselves, unworthy though we are, we will hold the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, who is God, eternal. <clears throat> Everything that you see was made by him and for him. And because Satan tried to usurp the position of God, and become God. And so Satan lied to Adam and Eve and tried to make them want to become God. We cannot become God. We are not infinite. We are creatures. But what does God do for us? He comes to us and allows us to partake of him in such an intimate way that we become one with him. And St. Peter, our first pope, says in one of his two epistles, we become participators in the divine nature. What we cannot be by nature, we share in, and that is grace. It is God's own life in you. You have a secular life, a worldly life, where you do different activities, school, recreation, friends, etc. But in everything you do, recognize 
that Christ is dwelling in you. That's what St. Paul says to us. Christ in you is your hope of future glory. You eat the body and blood of Christ. The two of you become one. You imitate Our Lady by carrying Christ within you and bringing Christ to others. We are to bring Christ to others and see Christ in others. We are to treat others as we would treat Christ. We are living with a fallen human nature. Adam and Eve in the garden walked with God. They could see the spiritual world around them. We are spiritually blind. So be careful. We have to learn to walk by faith, not by sight. By sight, in the crib in Bethlehem, looked like a little baby. It was a little baby in the human nature. But the person was infinite, eternal, word of God, God himself. He comes to us humbly, born not in a castle, a palace, but in a cave. He's laid in a manger. The manger, manje, is where the animals ate. He's born in Bethlehem, which translated is house of bread. And he comes to us in the form of bread that we eat. This bread in a few moments, will, just as the baby in human nature was covering over divinity, so this bread will become, while it looks like bread, it will become the body of that baby who is Christ, risen from the dead, conquering death by death, and we will receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the God-man. We walk by faith, not by sight. Your sight is limited. It's good. It helps us to live, not to fall over things and to uh, be able to function day by day. But there is a spiritual sight an inner sight which one day will be completely restored to us when we have our glorified body which will be just like the risen Christ. And you will then see the angels, the demons, and the saints who are here now all around you that you do not see. You will see your guardian angels who have helped you day by day throughout your life. You will see the demons as they're cast into hell, the ones that tempted you and wanted to drag you down to hell with them. You will see the saints who prayed for you. You will see the souls from purgatory who are released and are with the Lord and thank you for the prayers that you made for them. Again, I tell you, there is a grave deception coming. It will convince many, including the scientists, but you should be not deceived. I warn you now so that when it happens, you will remember. Hold fast to your Catholic faith. This faith is the truth. Our Lady will triumph. 
and be you not deceived. Do not accept the ways of the world, the ways of Satan, who is the God of this world. Do not accept the great deception, as convincing as it will be. Hold fast to your faith. Remain in communion with the Sea of Peter and the faith of all the popes and councils through the ages. May God strengthen you to do that so that not being dragged down to hell by the demons, not being convinced of the false teachings of the heretics, not being deceived by the great deception uh, which is coming and the demonic disorientation which is currently at work in the apostate church. Hold fast to the traditions, the teachings that we have always believed and they will surely bring you to a safe port. They will bring you to heaven with Jesus and Mary. Amen.